Hi creators, welcome to my channel. Now you might be thinking, what the heck kind of question is that? It's obvious, it's a boot. And okay, you're totally right. It is most definitely a boot. But it's not an entirely stupid question because you see it was born from an L. There I was making an L template, widening out the stem, making the bottom part thicker, drawing a pointy toe, Hmm, pointy toe. Maybe a pointy toe needs a pointy heel and a curvy foot. And maybe I should make it all taller. And next thing I know, I'm making a boot template. A boot born from an L. Well, for all you patient people wondering how to quill an abstract boot, let's get started. Our first skill is a swirl. I've got six strips here of blues and greens and I'm gluing the ends together with just a very little bit of glue on the ends of each. And to get the curl started, I'm prepping it with my quilling needle first and then I'm gonna uh, use my tweezers. And it's easy for it to kind of slip out. So you gotta squeeze pretty hard near the tip and I suppose if you have a wide slotted tool, that might work too. There we go. Now you can roll it some more if you want. Get the curl how you want it. Or you can adjust the curve of the tail. But here's the coolest part, spreading out the strips. To do this, use one hand to hold the sides and use your other hand to push or pull on the strips to change the spacing. And when you're happy with it, you glue the strips together. I'm not done with the swirl yet, but I'm going to set it aside for now. I need to get some other things done first before I can finish it. The next skill is the teardrop. This is going to be a multicolor teardrop. So I'm gluing three different colored strips together, end to end trying to make sure that the, uh, the whole strip is, is straight. And then you can choose your preferred method to roll it all up. I'm using a straight pin to begin. And then finish rolling by hand. This here is a tight coil. And when you let it relax, it opens up and becomes a loose coil. Glue the end and then pull the center to one side and pinch the opposite side. Ta-da! A teardrop. I'm going to wrap the teardrop in a purple strip going around three times. That's one. That's two. Thinking about it. Yes or no. Yes, three times. Snip off the end and glue it. And now we're ready to glue six of those teardrops to form a flower. Oops, get back there. Trying to get a thin layer of glue all over the bottom and then glue it down. Next up is a square. Roll up your strip, form a loose coil, and glue it shut. Then pinch opposite sides, rotate, and pinch again. There you go. One more time if necessary and you've got a square. I made a bunch of these in black and white for a checkerboard pattern, which I am totally excited about. Not sure why, but when the boot was born, I thought some checkerboard would be fun. And then that guided the rest of the color scheme because I figured I would need some bright, bold colors to stand up against the brash black and white. Oh yeah, <laughs> get ready for a crazy design. 
Now that we've got the flower in place and the checkerboard done, we can finish up with the swirl. I want it to hug the edge of the checkerboard and I also want it to flare out again as it curves around. So I space out the strips, then trim them all at the same spot and glue the ends. And that will keep the swirl spacing in place. I've made a thin layer of glue on my tray and this makes it a snap to get the glue on the bottom of the swirl all over and all at once without getting globby and making a mess. Hooray! I want to expand the swirl and I'll do that with some curved strips. Okay, lots of curved strips. This was kind of a tricky curve so I shaped it the best I could and I found it helpful while gluing to place one end and hold it and then bend the rest to where I wanted it and then uh, and place it down. And then I still had to do some small adjustments after that. I liked the blue and green, but I knew I needed some more pop. So I switched to oranges and yellows and pinks, which ties in perfectly with the flower. For the toe, I'm gonna make some more multicolored teardrops. Actually, they're more like multi-shaded ombre maybe? Sure, we'll go with that. Gluing down a purple ombre teardrop, green ombre, and blue ombre. The next skill is the scroll. Not to be confused with a swirl. Similar, but a scroll just uses one strip and it's delightfully easy. Use whatever method you want to roll part of a strip. and it's awesome, just like that. But you can also play with it to make the coil looser, or smaller, or shape the tail. Like for this one, I want to give it an S curve. So I'm going to take my quilling needle and gently rub the strip so the tail curls in the opposite direction. Adjust and trim till I'm happy with it, and then glue. Filling in the space with more scrolls in both dark and light pink. For the heel, I wanted to emphasize its tall vertical presence, and I thought some straight black strips would help do that. And give it some heft, like Dang, that's a heel you don't want to mess with. Okay, home stretch, guys. This last skill is a multicolored tight coil. Yep, more multicoloredness. This project is like, bam, color. So, what you want to do is roll up a strip nice and tight and glue it. But you're not done. Then glue the second color right next to the end of the first one and keep rolling. And just keep doing that for however many colors you want. One thing I really like about tight coils is that I can stick my quilling needle in the center and move it around to get rid of that kink that the slotted tool makes. Just kind of think it looks better. Flip side. Hey, looky looky, I'm gonna use a mold. This is like my second time ever. Okay, I'm gonna test out three bump sizes and show you the difference. This is the biggest bump the coil will fit on. Ooh, and it's not bad. Mounded on top. Okay, next bump. Pushing down everywhere to conform to the bump. Oh yeah, definitely sticking up more. For sure. And the last bump. Oh, yikes. I hate it. <laughs> Let's go back one. You might notice I've got some other smaller tight coils there on the side. I'll use the smaller bumps for the other coils. 
So I've learned that I need to glue the insides to help them keep their shape. Because when I glue them down, it's just natural to want to push on the top. And then there goes your awesome mounds. Unless you've glued the innards. All right, then just let them dry before you glue down. I just love that big tight coil. When I first made it, I thought it was hideous and I was positive it was going in the scraps bag. But for some reason, after I mounded it, I liked it and it kept growing on me. And now I love the ugly monstrosity and how it adds to the wildness of the boot. Way better than a cutesy fringed flower. I thought I was going to do an L. Who knew I'd end up quilling a boot? Well, I'm stinking happy with it. Let's do a close up. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time.